Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falk Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be a match between Ample and Hyuk here on Multiverse, a map I've never seen before. Top side, we have a white Terran, it is Ample. And on the bottom left-ish, it is a purple Zerg, his name is Hyuk. Alright man, so this is Multiverse, got this replay from RJB as part of the giant replay pack that he sent to me a couple years ago. Working my way through it, and okay, so... <laughs> There's a wall down the middle of the map consisting of assimilators, Protoss, Ozel Naga temples, and little uh, little walls here. So can we? What? Okay. Is this a two-player map? It's gotta be, right? Let's see. Is this a spawn location? Nah. No. 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 Too wide open. This is spawn look no, nope. Alright, so this is a two-player map multiverse. One universe is over here on the top left, and another one is down here on the bottom right. We need to see if workers can get through the middle, right? Or if you need to destroy the assimilators or Zelnaga towers, temples to get through. Uh Wow, super duper weird map. This is gonna be super duper weird week map. No, weird map week. On the channel, apparently. Woof. If you didn't watch the ZVP featuring Soma Off Racing versus Beast on Hidden Coven, then I highly, highly recommend that you do. If you wanna see Scout play, if you want to see Devourers, if you want to see Carriers employed against Zerg, woof, a very, very weird map, Hidden Coven. That is for sure, which leads to weird strategies. I won't tell you anything more than that, but go ahead and check it out. It was posted last week, which this is going to be posted on, I don't know, like June 6th or something? So last week would be like the last week of May, early part of June 2022. Yeah, hit that like button if you're excited for a ZVT featuring two players that have been heavily featured on this map. Apple likes to drop against Zerg, which makes him a bit of a standout player in the TVZ matchup. We'll see if that happens here today. And Terry the Overlord scouting out. Yeah, good job, man. Good job scouting out the barracks. You know it's not a proxy. Relay that to the Overmind, and you've done your job for the day, Terry. Everything else is gravy. Yeah, SCV being super incredibly annoying, as per usual. I mean, it's what SCVs do when they're doing that scouting thing. And, okay, all right, factory coming up. Oh, and lifting the bar- what? Why is he lifting the barracks? Is he going to scout it out? I think he wants to scout it out, but also we want to kill this overlord so it doesn't see the barracks scouting out. Because this looks like a mech opening play from Ample, which I don't know that I've seen him do. He really loves the 8-rack stuff. He's very good with marines and medics and firebats and science vessels and dropships. With the aforementioned drops. So it's interesting. I've never seen him open mech before, but that's got to be what this is. You don't lift the barracks at this stage of the game unless you're just playing and going mech, mech, mech all the way. Man, this is really vulnerable to like 12 links showing up and just kind of winning. But at the same time, we didn't get speed for the links. We went for a lair first, which the SCV scouted. So speed links aren't going to be a problem. I'm actually getting machine shot first. I thought he would make a Vulture first of all, but he's going Machine Shop into Vulture Speed, man. So we are opening Vultures. The mech is real right now on this map. And I don't know if that's because this is a mech-favored a mech favored map. I want to say, like, this is a good place for tanks to set up, but I don't know. I can't really hit the hatchery from there. That is way too far. Can you? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, this is bad. This is some high ground shit. Oh, man, you drop tanks up here. You protect this area with, like, some Vultures. Okay, I'm seeing the future here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm probably seeing what our guy Ample is going to try to do. We'll see if it works out for him or not. Now, macro hatch, wall in the soft. Sunken's going to be able to kill this vulture before he gets anything done, I think. He's going to come in. Yeah, doesn't really want to. Doesn't really want to go in there. Recognizes what's up. And that's Spire. So, I mean, Zerg player doing all of the normal things here right now. He's going for a mutalisk opening, which means we need to start making... I mean, at some point, we need Caron boosters... Start making some Goliaths, but uh, that's not really in the plan right now for Ample. I guess this, he needs to finish the Vulture Speed first. If he doesn't go for Caron Boosters now, I'd be really surprised. I mean, he's the yeah, your second fact. Let's see, has the resources. Yeah, he doesn't go have the minerals for that. We'll keep an eye on the production tab. Make sure he goes 
for that Caron boost eventually here. Starts making some Goliaths because if these Mutas show up and it's just Vultures on the ground, Vultures and Tanks, you're just a dead man. I mean, he's not getting an Engineering Bay. He's getting Engineering Bay. I'm a liar. Engineering Bay is in production right here, dummy. We got this. Uh, three Vultures trying to... Uh, oh, man. Taking some sunken shots, though. These Lings? Okay, one of the Vultures dies. Again, they're slow Lings. Oh, they're denying the gas here at the natural base, which is huge. Oh, Nick Yuck not be able to make any more... Well, not that many more Mutas. He's got seven. I think he's planning on going for some more. Sunken. Oh, man. Sunken's got a couple kills to his name. Really doing some good work here. So, anyway, production tab says, Behold, Goliaths. Machine shop says, Behold, no upgrades. No carry boost upgrade at all. No siege mode, no nothing. These are just regular old, boring old, standard range Goliaths that aren't awesome. But turrets are pretty good. So, yeah, the turrets are going to help here. Turrets working together with the Goliaths. That I'm watching that production tab. And I'm waiting for him to get Caron because he knows this is Mutas. And this might just be a thing where Hyuk wants to go for a lot of Mutalisks and just try to win this thing. There's your Caron boost upgrade. But by golly, it feels really late. So the Mutas are trying to find what damage they can without running afoul of the turrets. Okay, so he's killing the guys on gas, which is pretty good. Denying the gas here on the Terran is pretty fantastic. Mutas taking some hits, though. Ow. One Mutalisk does go down. And yeah, Goliath range, the Caron boost upgrade doesn't give them any extra damage. It just allows them to get an extra hit in as the mutas are flying around, sharking around the base. Let's see, third base attempt here. What is this thing? That's a door. It doesn't go up and down, does it? Why would you use a door mechanism? A door do that if it doesn't go up and down. Maybe it does go up and down. Can you just... You don't have to go up and down. Drones can just walk right through there. It's cool. Everything's fine. We're learning things about this map now. He's taken a third base where there isn't any of us being gassed, which I find really interesting. And why are there little individual mineral patches here? I wonder if you mine them, does that door open? This is an interesting, my gosh, interesting map week. It's looking pretty good. I gotta say I'm having a pretty fantastic time with that. You know, I'm gonna cast another Hidden Coven game for tomorrow. How about that? I go more Hidden Coven. Or Coven, I'm not, man. I'm just really uncertain on how to pronounce that exactly, but yeah. We're going for all the Goliaths in the world versus all of the Mutalisks in the world, which we've seen before. We saw Ample try it against Soma on Coliseum on a map that I did a couple weeks ago. And by golly, Soma made more Mutalisks than I've ever seen in a game of StarCraft in my entire life from professionals. It was all of the Mutalisks. It was kind of awe-inspiring. They blackened the sky. It was like watching a documentary. He really wants to kill this refinery, but it's being repaired. But it's not being repaired fast enough, and it's dead now. So that's awesome. Sniping the refinery. Taking some hits on your mutas, but I keep, think he kept all 11 of them alive. That's pretty fantastic stuff. Now, getting some zerglings to help with these goliaths is awesome. The mutas on their own are okay. Oh, let's see. Vulture got up here. He dead now. We are just making all the mutas, aren't we? Mutaling. Mutaling, mutaling, mutaling. This feels extremely, extremely StarCraft 1. And even early Brood War days where mutas and lings were just a beautiful, perfect complement to each other. We didn't get that many Lurkers in the Brood War days. Super, super early. We're not sure how to use them yet. So Mutas and Lings working together were just... Uh, they are both fast. The Lings were good against ground targets. The Mutas could obviously handle uh, air targets for the Lings. They were just the perfect combination. And of course, Metabolic Boost is required, which is coming in now. So we're going to see that. Plus, there is a Hydralisk Den on the way. So we might get some Lurkers in the mix. I don't know. Third base is pretty happy. No sign of a third base for Ample... I think he was trying to send that SCV out to expand, but that got really picked up and sniped by the Mutalisks, unfortunately, for the Terran player. Working on Siege Mode. Okay, recognizing I can't just win this game with Goliaths alone. Where are the Muta upgrades at? They got plus one armor, which, yeah, which is what you want to get, is the armor upgrade for these guys. If you want to keep making Mutas, you want to give them plus one attack eventually, but we're getting range upgrade for Hydra and speed upgrades for Hydras right now. Or is that... I was. I have a heart. I don't think it too has two Hydralisk Dens. But he can't... There's, okay, so it's going to be a missile attack. So we are going to move into potentially Hydra eh, Lurker, right? Lurker Mutalisk here, which is Manzerg, something that in-controls like to do. Like to do back in the day before he passed. One of his favorite strategies and pretty effective stuff. We'll see if that's what Hyuk is going to go for here. Kills one of the drones on the gas. Does that scouting Vulture pretty good stuff. But I mean, what is it? 82 to 93 supply at the moment. I mean, this is all of the mutiling in the entire universe. Yeah, we're not getting Lurker aspects. We're just getting... So this is just going to be Hydra. We're going, man. This is a going-for-it maneuver here. The Mutas are trying to black out the sun. 
Ling's trying to jump on some of these Goliaths. They're kicking. Wow, kicking butt on a couple of them here. That Siege Tank is doing pretty well, although Friendly Fire Splash Damage is a problem for those Goliaths as well. Oh, that Siege Tank stays alive with 11 HP to his name. The Mutas are just kind of winning here. Although, uh, hang on, hang on. The Missile Turrets are causing some major problems there too, and the Mutas actually have to back out. They're doing pretty well until they were fighting in range of those two turrets instead of up here. Oh, there's only one. I guess there were two turrets maybe there too, but right here seems to be a pretty good sweet spot to fight. So it's 73 to 69 supply. Ample kind of weathered that storm pretty well. Got a good handful of Goliaths remaining. He's got plus one armor on those dudes. Some of them are injured, but look at me. He's actually repairing his Goliaths too, like a good Terran commander should. But a fourth base is on the way here from Hyuk. This might be a Zerg win here today, ladies and gentlemen. If I mean, if we can't get a third base for Ample, I don't think he feels really strong enough to move out either. If he leaves the Muta's dive bomb in, uh, he's trying to get up to irradiate, but he's just now making a starport, which seems late. Uh, here at 11 minutes, based on everything else that's happened in this game. Yeah, now we're getting range upgrade for Hydras and missile attack upgrade for Hydras, plus two. These are going to be plus two Hydras with speed and range. Pretty scary units, and the tank count's not that high. Right? If there were three, four, five tanks back here, Hydra's busting in here would be pretty impossible, but one siege tank, which has been repaired again. Ample's in a good job with that. Great job with that. Okay, fourth base pops for the Zerg player. Not going for Hive Tech at this stage. I have not seen a Queen's Nest come through that production tab. So he's going to try to win this thing with Lings, Hydra's, and Mutalisks. Oh, I mean, no, just fewer Mutas, honestly. He's got some Mutas sharking around. Look at him just completely be ready for this Vulture. My gosh, what a boss here. This Vulture's ready for this too, though. Oh, you're getting hits off. Wow, getting hits off on that, dude. That was kind of amazing. Get out, drone, run. Ah, he didn't run. He didn't run. This Vulture is running. Is he going to make it out? He's juking. He's juking. Ah. Not able to do it. There's a Queen's Nest coming in now. Okay, Spider Mine Research. Love. And that versus these Lings and these Hiders, especially. This SCV is going to try to expand, but I think the Zerglings caught wind of what was happening here. So Ample is super contained here onto two bases. Can't be happy about that at all. God, the Muta's just, again, enough of a threat to her moving out with enough, without enough anti-air is just suicide right now for Ample. Gonna try to take down these assimilators, open up this bottom right-hand corner of the map to regular attacks. Oh, Hiders can walk right through here. What is the point? I don't understand. Okay. Spider mines getting hit, getting killed. Where are the overlords that are supposed to be flying with you providing detection? All right, Ling's running through. We are willing to sacrifice our little Zergling bodies to kill spider mines. I mean, Hyuk is no stranger to that at all. They just let this dude go because there's a bunch of Hydras right in that choke waiting for this vulture to show up. So yeah, Ample's on two bases in 13 minutes. The Zerg player is on four. Having double the bases of your opponent is really good in every matchup. But as a Zerg player, it's pretty good. It's not amazing. 4-2 to two is good. I mean, this is boy, a Terran that can't get a third base. I mean, especially against Protoss, but it still counts against Zerg. is really problematic. Ample, he's building more turrets. I think, again, he's worried about this Muta count, but I don't think he should be. I think he's mis... He's misinterpreting what's happening here. Is this going to be drops? Oh, this is going to be big Hydro Ling drop. Oh, this is going to be massive, right as Ample is moving out to... Is he... Yeah, that's it. This, the uh, Nubatized Carapace, Ventral Sacks. We're getting speed. We're getting drops for these overlords. It's going to be... Man, this upgrade takes a while. Ample's moving out, and that's the thing. I mean, I think Yuck wants to go for this drop now, but that upgrade is ponderously slow. Like, really, really slow. Throwing down those spider mines, they don't really accomplish anything. I don't, they didn't accomplish anything whatsoever, so that's not great. Uh, these hiders are like, no, 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 don't look over here. Nothing's happening over here. Irradiate's finally getting researched, but does it really matter? These vultures are like, what is, oh, what is happening down here? Well, the answer is there's some hydralisks preventing you from getting in there and finding out, seeing your vultures. And does he decide not to go for the drop? It looks like he's maybe sending his hydras up here. He's like, look, if you want to engage here, go for it. My gosh, he's busting right on in. All right, so the Mutas are doing what they can. That Hydra count, that plus two attack, and that speed and that range is so good. Tanks are getting obliterated. This is not great. <laughs> the choke, though. The choke, though, with the tanks on the other side of the wall is kind of incredible here. For Hyuk all of a sudden. Yeah, man, these, uh, these tanks are unassailable. 
All right, so the Hydras b bust on out there. They get out. This drop was aborted, but it could still happen. That's why some turrets are being built along this southern side. He recognizes the drop potential here from Hyok, too. Hyok is a Zerg player who is fine with dropping. He's making more and more Hydralisks. As long as he can deny the third base from the Terran, I think he's going to be fine. He can afford to make some bad trades, which he's done. I think that was probably a bad trade on his part. But does he have plus... Uh, he's working on plus one ground carapace. He's going for that drop. Which, was that a scan? What's he scanning? He scans the Hydra count, continuing to pop out. He recognizes the Hive is not done yet. So he doesn't have to worry about defilers at all. I'm going to try to do that more often, I think. I'm going to try to do that more often. When I hear a scan, just remove the other player's vision for a minute. And then we can see what exactly is being scanned. Okay, these Hydras are going to die. They are too smart for that. They back right the heck on out there. And yeah, he's setting some army up there to make sure he can actually get a third base. But it's a 16-minute third base. It's not great. I mean, it's more SCVs. Okay, Hydra's unloading. This is a pretty good position. If these Overlords all die, that'd be bad, because I think he wants attention for Spider Mines. So he doesn't lose all the Overlords. Okay, so this dude has exactly 69 HP, which, as my kids say, is a funny number. I don't think they know what it means, but they know it's a funny number. Hydra's trying to snipe down some of these supply depots, maybe supply blocking. Maybe getting a, oh, a science vessel here would be pretty fantastic, too. You know, these Hydra's pull back. Do not engage. Academy getting killed is fine. It's a fine target, I suppose. Also, Hydras are pushing top left. Dude, if Ample cannot save this thing... Oh, man. And an attack up the front. Dude, Hyuk is everywhere. And Ample is not ready for any of this. Sure, he's got tanks. Sure, they have two and upgrades, but they're outnumbered like 10 to 1 in that battle. These Hydras continue just to sit in the corner of the main base of Ample and do whatever they want. The third base is done. Ample's down to, back down to two bases. I don't think he ever officially had three bases. Hydras get in range. No minimum range. Okay, that didn't happen. He's busy microing this way. Again, denying the third base is a priority right now for our guy, Hyuk, and he is doing it very well. So, I mean, I honestly... I would have put money on Apple winning this game today. I just think he's the better player of the two, but you know what? Really, really well played by Hyuk. Really well played. A bunch of Mutalisks early, and then he moves into Hydra production, and the tank count just wasn't enough. I mean, yes, it's getting better, but by golly, the mining situation is dire for Ample. Uh, he's got, what, 30 SCVs now? He's up to like 42 or something. He's got these mineral patches remaining, which is just, it's not a lot. It's not much here. It's going to last maybe a little bit longer than I expected, but moving out is going to be impossible. It just is. Look at this. He's like, oh, you have four siege tanks, five siege tanks set up, maybe one on the other wall. I just don't care. And here comes... All of the Hydralisks, known to Zerg kind right now. They're stutter stepping up like they're Marines. They're not even really necessarily target firing down tanks. Okay, maybe that was some target firing there. But yeah, this is just playing Protoss. This is just using Hydras to whittle down the tank count and then get out of there. Trading Hydras for tanks is a great play in this situation. He just backs out. It's 110 to 58 supply. Adrenal gland just finished for the Lings, of which I don't know how many there are on the map. Okay. They don't have any attack upgrades either, so it's not the best Adrenal Gland upgrade I've ever seen, but you know, it's still an amazing attack increase, even if you are just using the base 5 attack for the Mutalisks, or the, for the Zerglings. Mutas don't have base 5 attack. You know how bad they'd be if they just had a base 5 attack? Anyway, yeah, this is I'm honestly a little bit shocked that Ample hasn't tapped out yet because he's... A d okay, well, he's going for some kind of drop! Ah, GG! <laughs> He went for the drop. I knew he'd go for a drop, and uh, he tried going for a drop. And failed miserably. I do not. Where on earth? Okay, I gotta see where on earth that was spotted by the Zerg player, because I caramba. He was on top of that. Play. Hit that like button if you enjoyed that game. That was really well played by Hyuk. I gotta say... There have been games where I've been disappointed with Yuck, especially in CVT, but today, today, he was doing everything right. He had a goal to prevent the Terran player from getting three bases. He stuck to it, and he got that win. Look at this poor command center being like, I'm going to get there. I could I could probably do it. No problem. Hydra's pull back. I check on the Adrenal. That finishes. Oh, you know what? There's just a Hydra here. There's Overlords all here. I mean, actually, hold on. I do want to, you know what? He's just got hydras ready for this. 
Where'd my music go? There's my music. I, mm, am I this to cl close to calling shenanigans? He does not see this drop ship. There it, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was just the worst luck of all time. Is all that was. That was, man. It was like 40% of all the hiders on the map were just kind of sitting right here. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, 2-1 Hydras versus Dropship, not fair. So yeah, there's just no pressure applied at all today. From Ample, he had to stay inside because the mute count was super high. He transitioned into a ton of Goliaths, and then they, guess what? There were Hydras popping out the other side. So now suddenly you can't move out because the Hydras are trading too well with your Goliaths and you just never harassed at all. Like two or three, maybe four drones died today. No pressure was put on any bases. I don't know if a hatchery took any damage whatsoever at all in this game. And if that happens in a TVZ, you might as well just GG. It's hard. It's really hard to win a game like that. So 115,000 points there from Hyuk, 104,000 from Ample. Both players end up losing similar numbers of units there, but Hyuk outproduced by 349 to 226, so that's your number today. Yeah, and zero Zerg buildings died today. I mean, it's not that rare. They don't have as many buildings as Terran does, but 22 to zero is a massive number. And then, end of the day, just outspent the Terran because he had four to five bases, and the Terran never got a third, 36,000 to 28,000, and bam, that's your GG right there. So, well done. Well, well done there from Hyuk. It's a good win. Zergs are happy today. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.